Hey, this is Samantha here from RecipeThis.com and the voice behind the Popular Kitchen Gadgets podcast, Magic with Gadgets. You know, we started Recipe This on the 1st of November 2015. Our daughter was just about to turn one and she's six now and it just feels like such a long time ago now. And the very first recipe we ever shared on Recipe This was how to cook air fryer potato wedges. Well, today we're going back to the beginning and we're showing you just how simple it is to cook air fryer potato wedges. This is an updated post, so we've updated it a few times over the years, but it's my husband's absolute favourite air fryer recipe and it's just one of these simple things you can cook in the air fryer. As well as this, we have more than a thousand kitchen gadget recipes over at RecipeThis.com from air fryer recipes to instant pot recipes to slow cooker recipes to soup maker recipes plus bread maker recipes and many others. I recommend you head over there to check it out after watching this video and find your perfect recipe. And this is my simple way for air fryer potato wedges. I always start with getting some medium to large potatoes of a similar size to what you'd use for baked potatoes and then you just want to chop them up. That's the kind of size that you want to be aiming for for your potato wedges because the chunkier they are the nicer they are because uh, the olive oil sticks to them and it helps make them even more crispy for you. So then just do the same with the other half of your potato and look they are just absolutely fantastic and then do the rest with the rest of your potatoes but note sometimes i've got this habit of getting too many potatoes out and then i don't have the air fry space for it so often i'll end up putting one potato to the side thinking oh i don't need that one now and then that goes for another day these potato wedges, I normally serve them as part of a Friday night or Saturday night supper. The husband in the background I know is dying to say, well you haven't done these for ages. Well that's true, I haven't. But when I do do them, what I like to do is have a slow cooker going with pulled pork and then make a cob salad and then serve them together as a nice supper. And it's also perfect for eating while you're watching a movie. So I use the bowl as my judgment. So let's see how many that makes and then we can decide whether to chop that last potato or not. And then in they all go. I think that's plenty actually. I'm not gonna use that last potato. So let's just put that to one side. If you are feeding quite a few of you, then you can do a bigger batch and do it in two rounds. So next step, you've got your potatoes sliced. Now let's add the seasoning. I like to add some black pepper, salt, don't be shy on the salt because it's what makes potato wedges taste so good. And I always recommend using sea salt because a regular salt doesn't taste as good once it's been cooked. And of course, sea salt is much better for you. Then my perfect wedges are all about the Cajun seasoning, though if you don't like Cajun seasoning you can swap this for Italian herbs, mixed herbs, a bit of oregano, whatever you fancy, and then a bit of paprika. And then once you've done this, you want to be adding in some extra virgin olive oil. What I do as a measure here is use the lid of my olive oil bottle and then I kind of do two lid fills and that's the same as just over half a tablespoon but it depends on how much oil you want to add if you're on a diet you could probably get away with a teaspoon and if you don't really care you can go up to a tablespoon and then give it all a good mix you want to make sure that the paprika and the cajun well seasoned on all the potatoes and then whoops i lost one there it shows how much i've got in my bowl and then when you've done mixing you just want to look at them and just make sure that they've got a good mixture of the seasoning on and that you don't end up with one super spicy one because it hasn't been mixed well 
And then once you've done that, it's ready for loading into the air fryer. Pull out your air fryer basket and now it's time to load in your potato wedges. Make sure they're not all stuck together because you don't want some crisping and not others. And then place your air fryer basket back into your air fryer unit. So let's set the time and temp, shall we? I go in with 160 Celsius, 320 Fahrenheit. The reason for this is because your potatoes are quite bulky and if you go in with a higher cook time, you'll end up with them not being cooked properly in the middle and a bit too crispy too soon. And then, because I'm doing quite a lot of potato wedges, I'm aiming for a cook time of 15 minutes and then press start. And we've baked. Now it's time to check on the potatoes and see how much longer we need to add because it does vary between the size that you chop your potato wedges at and how many of them you've got in your air fry basket. Some of the thinner cut ones like this will be perfect by now but your bigger thicker ones will need some more work. For example that one um, isn't as soft as I would like it to be. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do five more minutes and I'm going to increase the temperature up to 180 Celsius. That's 360 Fahrenheit and do an extra five minutes. And then we can check on them and then up the temperature up to 200 Celsius for the final crispy. And we beat. Potato wedges have now cooked at 160 Celsius and 180 Celsius and this is when I want to increase the temperature up to 200 Celsius but first of course you want to be able to check on them. So as you can see quite a lot of them are getting a fantastic crisp on them now. I got it with my instant pot and I've had it forever and I always use it with the air fryer because of it being made of silicone it will not scratch your air fryer and you can use it for instead of shaking your air fryer basket you can use it to just get under it like that you see or once it's on stock go like this give your potato wedges a quick shake before putting them back in the air fryer and then as you can see they're almost done now so we're just doing three more minutes just to give them a little bit extra crisp and then they will be done and we've baked and there you have it perfectly cooked potato wedges in the air fryer you can see they're not sticking or anything to it and then it's just perfect for serving and then what I recommend you do is you find your favourite dish and load them all up. There you have it and then you can just transfer that to the dinner table and everybody will be impressed with how delicious your potato wedges are and they will not realise how much low in calories they are compared to cooking them in the oven. So funny story, before uh, I had a chance to taste these I left them on the side in the kitchen and my 19 year old who doesn't look spicy like spices very much ran out of the kitchen and said you didn't tell me there was spices on those potatoes well he should have asked before going in and stealing my potatoes shouldn't he so you know he won't be having any more of these today i don't think but cajun potatoes are absolutely delicious you know if you've followed our other recipe we also have on the blog air fried cajun fries which are cooked in a similar way to these air fried potato wedges Let's try them, shall we? Lovely cook occasion. I'm really not that spicy. I think he has a problem with spices. <laughs> what can I say? But they are delicious. And if you don't like spices, you can swap the occasion for any other seasoning that you like. Just any dried herb that you like, such as mixed herbs, or as they call it in America, Italian, her Italian seasoning, anything like that will do the trick. And then you can have potato wedges on the table for dinner uh, in an easy to follow recipe that uses hardly any oil. 
Thanks so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe to the Recipe This family. You can find us on Twitter, Facebook and Pinterest. We also have a weekly newsletter at recipethis.com forward slash newsletter where we share with you our latest kitchen gadget recipes, what we're cooking in the Milner kitchen and so much more. As well as this, we recommend that you subscribe to our YouTube channel and then whenever we have a new video, you will be the first to know. And if you want to know about all our future videos, then I recommend you hit the bell for instant notifications. But even better, we now have a podcast. It's called Magic with Gadgets. Simply search Magic with Gadgets on your favourite podcast player and you'll find us there.